2021 is almost over. Today is December 30th, so uh, one more day, one and a half more days. I want to talk to you guys about the gear that had the biggest impact on my life the last 365 days. I'm not necessarily talking about the latest and greatest or the things that were released in the last 365 days. I'm talking about the things I use every day in order to teach and make music and just be creative. If you're new here, thanks for checking it out and you're going to find content on how to enjoy creating music more and how to actually get down to creating music in a world that's just always telling us we're not good enough to do it unless we have the latest and the fanciest gear. If you've been watching for a while and haven't yet already, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video and sharing my content with your friends who you think might like it as well. Obviously this isn't your typical year-end gear review. Truthfully, I don't even know who released what this year aside from maybe the Quad Cortex, that was new. Um, I haven't tried it yet though, and I don't really care to. Not that I don't think it's good, but I just don't need to. Anyways, <laughs> since this isn't your regular year-end gear roundup, let's actually just call them what they are, tools. These are tools that help reduce the friction between you and getting your ideas down in whatever format that might be. For me, these are the tools that allow me to work, they allow me to teach and record, they allow me to put my ideas down on paper or whatever that means now. Uh, that could be writing things down or getting musical ideas down. These are tools that help us enjoy making music more. Yes, most of these cost money and you have to buy most of these things to use them. I'm not actually saying you need them though. These are the tools that help me do my job and I think could possibly help you in your musical endeavors too. I'm actually gonna start out with possibly the least sexy of all of these things and that is Zoom. Maybe it doesn't have to be Zoom, it could be Skype or Google Hangouts or other things that exist that I don't know about, but Zoom has allowed me to make more music than anything else over the last two years. Honestly, I had never heard of it before COVID hit, and just prior to the pandemic, I had to do a gig with a guitar player who lived in another city. It was insanely embarrassing how long it took us to get hooked up on one of these platforms. I think we might have used Skype to go over the parts. <laughs> Little did I know it though, two weeks later I'd be putting an entire music school online, uh, so I learned how to use it real fast. I've been using Zoom and honestly I'm just using the free version right now. I'm only using it for one-on-one -on -one sessions most of the time so I haven't actually found a need to pay for it yet. If there ever comes a time where it's going to be beneficial, sure I will, but for now it works totally fine free. Zoom is something that will allow you to connect to anybody around the world and share your musical ideas. I use it every single day for teaching lessons and I used it a lot for different recording projects. I actually demoed an entire record with a singer-songwriter on Zoom over a couple of months before she came to the studio. With the restrictions we had in place here in Ontario, Canada, it didn't really make sense for us to get together over the winter last year, so we just did a Zoom session once a week where she'd present me with an idea, I'd create a demo track here, and then send it to her where she could actually just sing vocals into her phone like this and send it back to me. It was actually fantastic and by the time we actually hit the studio, things came together really quickly. It would be a great way for you guys to share ideas with anyone you might be working on remotely. Maybe you have a buddy that lives in a different town and you guys could never really collaborate musically before. This is a great way to do it. Okay, so number two, maybe the second least sexy thing? I don't know. Anyways, for me it's an iPad. Um, any tablet will probably do. Apple Pencil or Stylus for bonus points. For extra bonus points, just listen to this. That's a screen protector called Paperlike. Uh, it creates some drag on the iPad and makes it feel just like you're writing on paper as the name would suggest. I didn't know about this until a friend pointed it out to me. When I first started writing out different things on my iPad for students or for myself, I found it really tiring writing on the glass and my already illegible handwriting was just it was basically not even English at that point. So I use this every single day, as much as I use my computer probably, um, and as much as I use Zoom. Anytime I'm on Zoom, I've got this hooked in um, because I can share my screen with whoever I'm on Zoom with for, for chart writing or anything like that. I use a program called Fourscore that I got years ago to just store all my uh, digital sheet music. I was just scanning PDFs in it and now I actually write everything out in it. It's got some cool features like ruler and highlighters. You could use any kind of note taking software on any of these 
things though and it would do the job. The bonus of four score is that it actually has a way to categorize your set lists um, and your songs into, into whatever order you want. It's also really easy to back up. I actually keep a backup copy on Dropbox all the time. So wherever I am, I take this, you know, for charts for gigs if I need. And if something ever happened to this, I'd be able to access my charts still uh, anywhere in the world. Okay, so coming in at number three on my list is Guitar Pro. I'm not sure what version they're on now. I have Guitar Pro 7. I think there might be one more now. Either way, having some sort of sheet music software is really, really important, at least for me. I use it both for learning things for myself and for teaching. I like transcribing things into it for students, and also sometimes I'll even just download ones right from Ultimate Guitar and manipulate them into however I want it to sound for the student. What's really awesome is when they have the program, they can take the same file, they can listen back, and they can loop things. It's really, really, really great if you're trying to build up some speed or learn more difficult passages. Something else that's great too is if you're already using a DAW, which we'll talk about later, you can actually export MIDI files right out of Guitar Pro and you can open them in whatever DAW you're using to create a backing track. You can manipulate the speed from there, you can change the sounds of the instruments and all kinds of really cool things that can actually help you to learn to use your DAW better. Personally, I like to transcribe things when I learn them, and often I'll do it in Guitar Pro for an extra challenge. It really keeps me on top of my sheet music knowledge and on note values and all kinds of things like that. So if that's something you're struggling to learn, this might be a really good place to start. Number four on my list is some kind of DAW. If you're unfamiliar with that term, DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation aka recording program. It's somewhere you can record tracks, both MIDI and audio, and it's just a really, really great thing to incorporate into your day-to-day -day musical life. For me, it's something I didn't actually really start digging into until just a couple of years ago, um, which is relatively recently in the grand scheme of my musical world. I was always really intimidated by the idea, and I thought you had to have a whole education to know how to use that kind of software or dedicate all kinds of time to it that I didn't think I had. But as soon as I started using it a little bit every day, I was really, really surprised how quickly I picked up on it and how beneficial it was. For me, what made the biggest difference was actually being able to record myself in time with the metronome and other tracks and have things sound really, really good for when I was practicing. I liked it better than just playing through an amp, kind of being you know, annoyed that I couldn't get it to sound how I wanted it to, and then having music playing through a different device or a different program. For me, it's a really great way to kind of just do everything all in one place. You don't have to go all out and get Pro Tools and, you know, sell your soul every month to have the best of the best. I use Logic, which was a one-time purchase as long as this version is good, um, but there's also all kinds of good free options out there. If you're on a Mac, I would suggest starting with GarageBand. It's really, really good for a free program and definitely has everything you need in it to get started. If you're on PC, I'm a little less familiar with that world, but I know that Cakewalk Band Lab is a free option that's pretty good and I've had a little bit of experience in it. And then most other companies offer some sort of a light version. If you already have an interface, you probably have a light version of some kind of software that came with it. A lot of the times you'll just be limited to how many tracks you can have uh, and different things like software instrument availability, etc. Don't get too hung up on Pro Tools versus Logic versus Reason versus whatever else is out there. Just pick something that works for you, that's free or in your budget, and get started. If you're already set up in a DAW and working away in it with your guitar, the next thing I suggest is getting a MIDI keyboard. They're relatively inexpensive. You can get things as big as this or up to like a full 88 key weighted situation. I use a 49 key keyboard. It fits nicely under my desk and it does everything I need it to do. I'm not a piano player, so for me it's just about mapping out different ideas either on drums or other instruments, and it's also taught me a lot about the piano. Um, I no longer have to count the notes to get to wherever I want to go, usually, and uh, now I know how to play basic chords too. So I use it for filling up different recordings or for programming different instruments. For a lot of my students, I suggest they start by trying to make their own backing track for a song they're learning, and it can be as simple as a really basic drum beat and a bass pattern just playing root notes underneath the guitar chords. That way you have something to play along with that's not just the song. You can vary the speed, you can change the key if you want to, and eventually you can start to add in more instruments as you get more comfortable using the MIDI keyboard. This might seem silly because if you have a computer, you definitely have some kind of a mouse or a keyboard, but 
I think it's worth talking about. The biggest features on it for me are being able to pair multiple Bluetooth devices to it, which I thought was maybe kind of silly at first because I just wanted to use it with my computer, but I've been able to pair it with my phone and with my iPad. So if I'm just like hanging out in the living room and I want to write a script for a video or make some notes or do anything for lessons, I can just pull out my iPad, I just click a button and it syncs to my iPad and then I can start writing in whatever program I have on there. The second thing I didn't realize I missed so much was having backlit keys. I have that on my laptop and I never had it on a keyboard until now and this one came with that so when I'm working in the dark in the evening and I want to keep the lights down and you know create kind of a, a mood or an atmosphere I can see the keys really well or even if it's pitch black I can still see what I'm typing. As far as mice go I just suggest try a bunch of different things until you find what you like. I just settled on a Logitech uh, trackball. I really like that it's wireless and this one's really cool. It's the, the latest ergonomic one where you can actually adjust the angle on it. It also has other great features where you can do side scrolling and some other things that I haven't even dug into yet. Whatever you decide on, get to know your mouse and your keyboard really well and start to learn the hotkeys for whatever programs you're working in. It's something that is kind of awkward at first because it's maybe easier to go click, although in the long run, if you actually learn how to use those keys or the mouse strokes, you're gonna make your life so much easier down the line. Okay, let's actually get into specific guitar related things. One of the most important things I think you can have is some sort of modeling device. Now this doesn't have to be crazy or super expensive. I use a Helix and an HX Stomp just because that's what I got used to. It's probably the thing that changed my life the most when it came to practice or recording or just everything music in general. I was able to have sounds I loved at my fingertips in a box this big that was always plugged into my computer. I never had to dial in an amp and worry about being too loud or mic a speaker or anything like that. The biggest impact it had was just on my practice. I wanted to practice more because it sounded good and I had so much fun using the unit. Something else I love about the Helix or the HX Stomp, anything in that world, is that it acts as an interface. If you don't already have an interface, you can get really, really great sounds by just plugging the device in USB to your computer and then working in the DAW with just the unit. There's all kinds of other things out there you can choose from that are really expensive like Kempers and Axe FX, etc. Don't be afraid to go for something less expensive. I know the Headrush units are really fantastic or even just something like GarageBand amp modeling. All that stuff has come a really long way. If you have a decent computer and a way to plug into it, you're going to be able to get some pretty awesome sounds using plugins. This takes me to the next item which is an interface. If you don't know what an interface is, it's essentially like the control center for everything you want to do musically. It's got inputs and outputs on it. So a lot of the times they'll have possibly two inputs where you can plug in one quarter inch and one XLR, or sometimes two XLRs uh, with quarter inch jacks in them. It's just a way for you to get your guitar or a microphone into the computer. And then it's got outputs to go to your speakers or your headphones to be able to listen back. I'm using the Universal Audio X4, which is probably overkill for most people um, and maybe even overkill for me. I wanted to just have the four channels so that I could have different things plugged in all the time and just press a button to switch between them instead of having to fuss with plugging cables in and out. There's so many good options out there for under $200 that will get you hooked up to your computer and being able to plug in your guitar or your microphone. Okay, so you've got an interface and now maybe you want to plug something into it like a microphone. If you don't already have a microphone, a good place to start would be a dynamic microphone like a Shure SM57 or an SM58. The great thing about dynamic microphones is they pick up what's close to them the best and reject a lot of the noise around them in the room. So if you don't have a treated room, it's going to sound a lot better. And also they're generally a little bit cheaper. You can use this kind of microphone for literally everything. It could be for singing, it could be for just recording your voice or, you know, sprucing up the audio on your Zoom calls, um, or you could just go ahead and mic your acoustic instruments with it too. Now, you might hear people telling you you have to use a condenser microphone on an acoustic instrument or that maybe it's superior to a dynamic microphone, and I don't think that's really the case. Whatever microphone you have at your disposal is the best one. Item number 10, the last thing we're going to talk about today is having monitors or headphones. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. You just want to have something to listen back to your music on that sounds pretty good. They both have their pros and cons. I like having the option to use both, however if you are just going to have one to start off, I'd say just get a decent set of headphones. My preference is something closed back. These are the two sets I have handy, one's an Audio Technica and one's a Blue. They're both awesome because they're closed in so that I don't get a whole lot of bleed when I'm recording. They're really comfortable and I can wear them all day. 
Honestly, anything will do if you're just getting started. The benefit to monitors is that you can listen to something back in the room with multiple people, and maybe it's just a little bit more comfortable long-term. I like to use my monitors when I'm recording electric guitar so I can take my headphones off and just be comfortable in the room. Also, they're really nice to have just to be able to play back your songs or listen to anything or watch anything on your computer. Again, with either monitors or headphones, I don't think you have to break the bank. Also, bigger isn't always better. I have a set of five inch monitors back here that were really, really reasonably priced. They're Yamaha HS5s. I have a pretty small room, so I certainly didn't need to go for a big eight inch speaker. It would just be too much in this space. So that wraps it up. Those are the 10 most important things in my life musically over the last year. Those are things that I will probably use for the rest of my musical existence. And they're things that I couldn't live without at this point. Again, maybe some of these are useful to you. Maybe some of them aren't. I challenge you to think about how you work and the kind of work you want to be doing and invest in tools that are going to make your life easier. You also don't have to get them all at once. You can just take it one step at a time and there's plenty of music to be made along the way. So if you made it this far, I want to just take some time and thank you guys for being here. Your time and attention in such a noisy world is really, really appreciated. If you're like me, you know that time is probably the most valuable currency we've got, and I'm really, really grateful that you guys choose to spend some of yours here with me. Until next time, I hope you guys get out there and make some music, be it alone or with other humans. To the gentleman who wanted more dogs, it's coming, don't worry. Winston! It's so bright, so, okay, one second, let's just see. Come here. Pa. Winston, Pa. He's kind of far and happy with where he's at. Also, he needs a walk, so I think he's kind of pissed that I'm doing this.